Hello everybody and welcome back to my rebranded channel. This is the Centralized Dave with Curtis. Hello Curtis. Hi David. We are back to our weekly podcast that we made shorter, 30, 30 minutes only. And today we have a tons to talk about um, and we will we have chosen sentiment to be our main topic. So um, stay tuned. Uh, let's talk shortly about the updates. So Curtis, you always start. Go on. Yeah, so you can see Bitcoin's at just a little over 19,000. Um, obviously, it's been a huge week in 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 crypto news. We'll go talk about that. But Three Arrows Capital. Mm -hmm. um, so we've gone through what you'd call cascading liquidations. So liquidations triggering liquidations triggering more liquidations, and we're still we've got that overhang. So um, the DeFi platforms like Voyager and uh, um block are defaulting i have a question yeah uh has the three arrows capital been liquidated already or is it just yet to come well they've been they're bankrupt they're insolvent so the company's mm -hmm. dead um the coins have not been sold off i doubt yet if they have any coins left so yeah that could be the next uh shoe to drop right would be if if like celsius gets liquidated then mm -hmm. whoever takes over if you go through bankruptcy with a company what you do is when the company goes bankrupt and this could be crypto company or any type of company you'll usually have sort of lawyers come in and sell off the assets right they'll come in and say who yeah. are the creditors we prioritize the creditors and then we start selling off assets so mm -hmm. um it could be it's likely that um uh Three Arrow Capital or Celsius or, you know, whenever Both. these companies mm -hmm. actually collapse, that there will be coins left that need to be dumped. Mm -hmm. And and also remember that the people, the lawyers don't care the price they dump them at. Right. The yeah. lawyer's job is just to sell at any price. So yes. you'll you'll they don't care if it if it triggers a, a negative chart. Right. So um, this is an overhang and a concern for the next uh maybe even a few months. Um, so anyways, we're at 19,000. The other thing is this weekend is a long weekend in uh, in the US. It's it's uh, July 4th weekend. And mm -hmm. what that means is a lot of people can't put new cash into their accounts mm -hmm. um, and that we could have a bit of a dip this weekend. Some people are saying that there's not going to be a lot of price support. So uh, look for Sunday, Monday, uh, U.S. time zone for that kind of potential dip, um, mm -hmm. and you know we're getting to very um, high levels of negativity in the market. E well, okay, we will talk about it in a yeah. in a few minutes. So, would you like to mention S and P five hundred as well? Yeah, I didn't really follow it. I think there was yeah, was it is that weekly? That's daily. daily. So it looks like Friday was okay, but you um, want to see weekly? That's um, the weekly. Sure. Yeah, the weekly was bad again. So not good. And for me, on Monday, when I saw stocks go negative, I sold out of my Bitcoin trading position because I figured it would knock on. Um, so you were right, David, on this. You called last Thank you. week. You said it was going to be lower this week, and you were right. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Thank you. Um, yeah. So there's just so many negatives. There's, you know. Um, what is it? Endogenous and exogenous. So endogenous is internal problems with crypto and exogenous is legacy markets. Both of these are quite negative towards crypto. Um, start, we're, we might be in a recession now. Uh, the GDP came out, I mm -hmm. think, negative uh, for the second quarter. So we may have had two quarters of negative growth, which is technically a recession. Okay. Okay. So because global think, recession is here. Okay. That's very. Well, no, this is a U.S. recession. There would be a U.S. U.S. GDP. Europe and China. I yeah. think the recession yeah. has already been confirmed. Yeah. So a global so, recession. Yeah. So good chance. And then, of course, um, the stock market has already priced some of this in. But yes. what uh, real estate in particular has not sold off yet. So real no. estate will typically be a lagging indicator, right? Mm -hmm. um, people hold on to their homes as their last asset, right? Like if your stocks crash, you still hold on to your home because you live there, right? Mm -hmm. So, um, um, and it takes time for, as uh, the Fed rate goes up, mortgage rates go up and it takes time for those mortgages to reset, 
right? Because they're typically fixed. So uh, long story short, there's lead time between stock selling off and then real estate selling off. Mm -hmm. And we're coming up to a point where that might start happening. So that would be the next leg down into uh, a, a bear market. Um, um, so more pain to come. Yeah, fair enough. I guess it's my turn. Well, you've said some of the things that I wanted to say. So, uh, yeah, uh, we are lower indeed than the last podcast that we were the last, po- last podcast. Um, it's the beginning of July. Um, um, we are going to talk about the sentiment. I'm a sentiment guy. Sentiment is something I generally like, enjoy, look at. I go deep into leverage. That's what I want to mention. Right. And this is this is important here. So we're talking about this this week, these few days that will that were the days where people were adding long leverage again. Long so, leverage. Yes. Okay. Yes, and that, that's also why I was so uh so decisive the last week that no, that this is not gonna go higher because yet again and I've been on Twitter, I've been criticizing so many people by now for it. I just can't stand it. I'm just so tired of it. It's for six straight months, still the same. And yeah, we're going to talk about the sentiment and what needs to happen in order for the crash to stop. Uh, to, to stop. And it's definitely not yet another indicator why we are at the bottom. It's definitely not shaming people. Uh, that are not buying at the moment. That's definitely not what's going to stop this crash from happening. So, right. uh, however, we had a w- one good day uh, where we were uh, shorting a lot. And that day was 30th of June and the 1st of July. These two days uh, looked like so that is like for and against and there was like a very mic mini short squeeze like this yeah this here it was a very mini mini minor short squeeze um yeah so there is some sparks of hope we are gonna have to see many more days like this like the 30th of june and the first of july where people were shorting a lot and the short leverage was coming we will need to see those um uh, way more uh, if you remember the last summer, that was a very intense. People were very intensely uh, shorting, and especially now I have just moved the chart to the to the summer 2021. Especially uh, in July, July was a beautiful descending wedge, lots of shorting, yeah. lots of short leverage. That's the only conditions that are gonna stop this from going lower and lower and lower. What we've seen here, I think a, a learning or takeaway for your listeners is that, and it's something I think I've learned as well, is that on the way down, when you have liquidations, they don't care about technical charts. So when you have extreme events like a Lehman shock event, or in our case, mm-hmm. this uh, three arrows, on the way down, no technical support was hit, really. Um, it was basically cascading liquidations. And when yeah, people have yeah. to sell, when people get margin called, it's forced selling. And when people get scared, they just dump it. And so if you look at the chart going from 2020 all the way up to the peak, you could see that it followed a lot of technical uh, logic, let's just say. There was, there was, there was, there, well, there was the exponential move there, but there was a lot of, uh, let's say, technical analysis that might have been accurate or informative, let's call it. Mm-hmm. On the way down, we broke all of that. The three arrows capital, that's the article we have opened for you. And that's just what Curtis yeah. has talked about. So, yes. Yeah. So about minutes. six major, sorry, about six major companies were, were heavily leveraged to uh, three arrows. So three arrows was misrepresenting its data. I don't know if they're going to go to jail, but they seems like they've broken the law. They misrepresented their risk position and they borrowed from BlockFi, they borrowed from Voyager, they borrowed from Celsius and several others, Babel, I think. And so all of these other companies are now in trouble. Um, this is mm. exactly what happened with Lehman Shock in 2008. Um, there was a misrepresentation of risk with collateralized mortgages. In this case, it was 
just over bets on uh, just leverage. And now the chart that you want to talk about is this mm -hmm. one. This is what you would call the, I don't know, the, the bear, the bull bear cycle. Yeah emotion maybe emotion cycle because yes emotion emotions cycle. do have the yeah. cycle i agree about that that the emotions of the people they do cycle we could go from left to right we could look at you know optimism would have been coming out of the lows in covid right i think it was at 3500 dollars um yeah bitcoin had gone down but then bounced very sharply because uh, the fed injected a lot of cash and optimism became enthusiasm and exhilaration very quickly yes. um now when we hit the sixty-five thousand, in my opinion we were not at a euphoria stage i mean these terms are relative but um a lot of um sort of long-term bitcoin bulls did not think we'd gone high enough that we were at the top of the bull market well, let and me tell you hundred percent have thought that hundred there was not a single yeah. voice not yeah. a one you yeah. can check anybody you want you just check their content we did have an exponential run in hindsight it was mm -hmm. a new high um and market sentiment was very positive mm -hmm. okay uh then we're going we've gone over where suddenly we hit a double top at sixty nine thousand, and we started going down um and i guess today we can talk a little bit we're on the red curve here we're somewhere between you know so unease, denial, somewhere between denial and despair. Everybody's there now. I don't know anyone that's only uneasy, right? Mm -hmm. um, so denial, pessimism, panic, capitulation, despair. Different people, I think this is important too. I think different people are in different moods, right? So maybe if I, got wiped, if I got wiped out in, in Voyager, I'm in despair. But if I, you know, if I wasn't on a lending mm -hmm. platform, maybe I'm just in panic <laughs> so um and then the other thing is that um you might uh, one way to think if your mood is different than the market there are opportunities to go short or long so if i'm in uh denial but the market is panicking i might lose money right because the price is going to go down and contrarily if i'm ahead of the curve if i'm thinking despair but the market is still not there yet i can time the bottom better and maybe be ahead of the market right so um it's good to know where your head is and it's good to know where the market is and sort of to see that there's sort of test you know are you right or is the market right so um you know where we are now i don't know i would probably call it somewhere between panic and capitulation we definitely have panic in the markets mm -hmm. um we're, we're off you know we're off what 80 percent, 75 percent in bitcoin uh, typically, 86% or 85% is the full sell-off for Bitcoin. Um, there's definitely panic in the market. Um, people spreading weird news. People losing all their money. I don't yeah. even think we are in capitulation. I think most of the market is in denial. When you open Twitter and when uh, you just read all of that, you can just you can even have a look at my Twitter and who I criticize. I just criticized randomly a few people like and it's all the denial there like oh my but, gosh it's just yeah but so bad. okay so that's a good discussion point so yeah the the traders right are in denial because mm -hmm. they're just trading right but yeah if you i think if you, if you talked to the average Bitcoin, uh, crypto investor they're probably okay. very depressed right now they've lost a lot of money don't you think like the average person mm, i don't know anybody who would be depressed i have yes i have seen investors the average investors retail investors that i talked about they are kind of in a panic that's yeah. true they told average. me yeah. my, they, they told me that you know the first moment when they kind of try to break up if they would like break out even they just get out of this and they just want their money back and yeah they just uh it, it's a sign right. of panic so you know your average investor in crypto has been burned by DeFi, or has just been burned because their bags have gone down i mean altcoins are down 85 percent, right yes yeah so Pretty you can't much. say they're just in denial but so anyways it's interesting um where are you you i i try to ignore this <laughs> i try to look at what the majority is doing and i try to then uh, adjust to that you know the borders 
I, I guess it's my turn to talk sentiment sure. or at Go the ahead. moment. This is yeah. my version of your chart, sentiment yeah. chart that I, this is the famous one, right? This is the old one, I think. Yeah, yeah, I've seen so this. So yeah. I, I, I think this one is pretty spot on. And yeah. uh, where I am, I always try to uh, keep myself on the edge. Um, not make I've I've learned not to make uh, long term calls because they've always mistimed. So always be open to what the people are doing and then just to to um, um, take conclusion out of it. Like even be prepared to turn tomorrow. Well, maybe not tomorrow, but like to turn in a week if if I see that really the tide has been turned and if I see everybody completely like shorting or stuff like that, then I would really start turning bullish and really bullish. Um, and all, But also uh, at the same time, I have to say that this is the general, this is like the majority of the market. There's always exceptions. There will still be some, in, even in crypto, there will still be some projects that are going to have a good July, you know. There right. are still, even if Bitcoin goes like my old video from 2021, everybody expects this to be the bottom. Everybody, even all of those influencers that were hesitating whether really 100k here, they told you that okay, 20k is the bottom. Everybody expects that to be the bottom and even to be recovered from very quickly. So that's why I'm pointing my finger that if it can ever happen that we go down abruptly without any reaction, it is going to be on 20k. Even if Bitcoin goes there this month, there are still gonna be some cryptocurrencies that gonna have a good month because right. they have some uh, some crucial releases and they have a small cap, so few whales moved the whole market cap. Right. And then they're going to have maybe bad the next month, you know, and maybe Bitcoin is going to have a good uh, August, who knows. But you ask me where I am. Uh, yeah, I try to really not to be uh, in, the, you know, I try to be, I'm, I like to be contrarian. So I would like to say that I am nowhere to be found in this. Well, in this yeah. Year. So, yeah, I mean, it, so I've been through a couple cycles with Bitcoin already. So I would have to say I'm also none of these because... I'm a long-term believer, right? So the yeah. influencers, they are in denial still. And this is also, it, it, uh, their losses have will prolong this. You know, I bankrupted the last year because of my stupidity, but, and also bad luck to be honest. But uh, what happens once you go bust, you just, you don't want to admit it to yourself. You want to, you really literally start just thinking, you know, I'm gonna come back soon and just, you know, like, you know, I, I, this is gonna go come back and you just don't want to, you are you began you really get stuck in a denial and it also makes the process of of you coming back way longer actually markets are not really fair because the average retail trader is going against people like goldman sachs who have infinite dollars right but the average investor who has maybe a small nest egg or money that they can't really afford to lose they will capitulate and and dump everything at the bottom and basically go out of of business, uh, you know, yeah. bankruptcy, and they don't have either. The, there's two things: either they don't have enough confidence in what they're investing in, and they lose. They just lose the confidence. And then the number one is it's just too stressful for their family. Um, both of those will have people just give up at the bottom, and that's mm -hmm. obviously the worst time. It's typically the worst time to sell, and markets do tend to recover generally. I try to follow as few people as possible, but I did drop a follow to this guy he owes it but uh because i discovered some of the some of the ideas um that i uh i've never seen anybody else uh thinking or saying saying out loud and they kind of resonate with my own um although he seems to be like straight bare like just like and I also i don't like that either i don't like each like if you're like a straight bull or just bull and if you're just straight no. bear, just bull. i don't no. like either of that i don't like it it's it's nonsense yeah this is in january 20th uh, january this uh, this year where he was uh, predicting that there's gonna be some kind of a, a bear market rally which what happened in in uh, april 
and as you know everybody everybody was again like no this is gonna go up and then another he predicted another huge wave of drop uh, uh right. after that which is happening at the moment um then he's talking about that we are gonna take uh, we're gonna drop lower than the corona bottom in here is where i differ from him because if you look at my smp 500 chart i have two lines here one and this the first line has been there for pretty long time actually i think even half year and by the second line i added like a two like a two months ago or so, something like that and my second line is like the most bare bare scenario which i think it's possible and right. it's still within the COVID lows so i disagree there with him but the first line still hasn't been hit yet so as well elliot waves yeah. are tricky you need mm. like 10 years of experience with them to be profitable yeah. following them so it's like basically none of these guys have that maybe i'm uh, i'm wrong about he owes it maybe he does but i don't think so and it's just that uh, it's again it's kind of just apophenia the problem with elliot waves is you can make it look like you're right all the time there it is, you there, it it is. there it is so you know you can put like mm, you can like put your numbers for, in for yeah. instance here the the small red numbers like one two three four he chose to put three four here but he didn't choose to put it on this you know it could have know. it could have kind of been a three four could have been here it's basically like you can find what you want to see there exactly uh exactly. so very careful if somebody's using Elliott waves unless he really has 10 plus experience and uh, none of these kids have like most of these quote-unquote analysts that that have you know uh, large audiences they just make themselves to be to look like they're really good analysts but they're just lucky kids who just got lucky with the Bitcoin and they're good at selling themselves and selling the idea of being good rather than actually being good. Yeah. We are going lower and uh, yeah, um, my next target for Bitcoin and that target has been there for a very long time, Curtis. You know which target it is. 12.5? Yeah. Yeah. I'm happy for it to go down. cheap Bitcoin. So we can't just look at technicals, right? We have to look at macro events. We have to look at legacy stocks. And we also have to just look at actually who's who's selling, right? So GBTC has some risk to it. We have, so there's actual things happening that, mm -hmm. that no one knows because the future hasn't occurred yet. And so we need to watch those closely and react to them. And they will, they will define the chart more than just the chart right the chart is looking backwards but there's people need to keep track of actually what is happening and what could happen and make predictions from that but um that but you know you're right it when sentiment is un unrealistically bullish we're probably going down and vice versa yeah maybe the last thing that we can look at is bitcoin dominance which continues to decline and if you look at weekly it's yet another red week and this is extraordinary this is extraordinary every time in the past every time let's look like bitcoin has been dropping like since like since since mid of february 2020 that's what that was the corona crash started happening since mid of mid february 2020 and it peaked somewhere in march and the the dominance was going up because altcoins were being dumped harder than bitcoin because there was panic on the market okay yeah. then the bottom like in 2018 the bottom occurred since like in november like since so the beginning of november to the like uh, mid december and the dominance was going up once again because there was panic and everything was uh, getting damned harder every major crash in the past the dominance was going up and this is the first time i see i think where the dominance is going down this is something that never happened before can you think of an idea that would be counter to your your thesis like like i are you saying that that's because you think alts are starting to turn in terms of preference or could there be other reasons i think this might be just the beginning it's going to be i think longer process for that to happen fully i think this might be just the beginning of like well, I know, I know you're, 
So, I know you're bearish on Bitcoin, but what I was asking is if you can think of an idea that's contrary to what you're saying. Yeah. Um, like yes, in other words, just because uh, like, I don't know the answer to that. I'm not. I don't follow uh, dominance charts. I was just curious. For example, something to do with the BTC that was collateralized and then liquidated. It got sold off because it had to, to be. Yeah, yeah, that's what I was I don't going know. to say. You would know better than me about that. That's what I was going to say. That exactly what you just mentioned. That it's probably due to that that too many people, too many Bitcoin maxis have been just overexposed and, you know, that's... Well, it would have been the collateralized Bitcoin that was connected to these defaults, right? Mm -hmm. So even though you disagree, most people in, in, the, in the market think of Bitcoin as, as the premier asset that sort of holds everything down, right? That's why we have things like wrapped Bitcoin and sort of staked Bitcoin and collateralized Bitcoin. Most players believe it to be the, the premier asset, even if you disagree, that's fine. But because of that, a lot of Bitcoin was, was staked to then borrow and trade all coins. Yeah. And then I'm wondering, just asking a question, I'm not stating a, a thesis. I'm saying, I wonder if some of that sell-off was because of the liquidations, right? I think that um, most of it was because of the liquidations, but the result is going to be all the same because it's just that, um, okay, like, yeah, it was because of, I think it, you are right about the reasoning why it's happening, but the result is still the same, like the dominance is being lost and the consequence, I think, might really be the beginning of the process of the coupling, but I would I would guess that first the crypto will decouple from the stocks. So I think, you know, uh, I think it, it's going to need time. But what, made is your, anyway. what is the probability? Like, are you not really bearish on altcoins over the next two years? Like, I know you have some coins you like, particular ones, but generally, if you're talking about like the top 100 altcoins. Um, I stop making long predictions, uh, long term right. predictions. <laughs> To, I'm going to be looking at what's going to be happening. Or you like to predict Bitcoin's demise. <laughs> I like to predict the, the Bitcoin only that. dominance. That's the only long-term prediction. The like Bitcoin dominance demise. That's one I can, I, yes, I feel confident enough to predict okay. long-term. The Bitcoin dominance How confident demise. are you? You don't want to be too confident. <laughs> How confident yeah. am I? Uh, as yeah. Very confident that it's going to go at most 61% ever and never Okay, I never. I should never say never, <laughs> <laughs> but yeah. I am confident it's not going to go over sixty-one percent Bitcoin dominance in the future, even. Right. So let's let's uh, just play some back and forth here. This whole crash, uh, DeFi explodes, altcoins crash, Bitcoin crashes, tons of negative sentiment, tons of trust is broken. Um, who was hurt more, Bitcoin or altcoins? Over the past few weeks, it was Bitcoin. No, no, since, since, and even since Bitcoin the... brand was hurt as well, because now everybody think... will reconsider if they want to uh, hold Bitcoin as collateral to anything. Yeah, everybody so which was hurt more though? Which both have been hurt, I agree. Which was hurt more? Over the past weeks, it was Bitcoin. No, not that was the hurt past more. six months. Past six months, well, obviously it was still, I think, altcoins, but not by more, not by much. I think not by much. Yeah, that's fair. That's fair. Again, I don't, you know, when I hear criticisms of Bitcoin, some of them I, I, I say, yes, that's valid. However, which coin is better? And usually the same criticism is even more magnified in the alternative coin. Um, I mean, obviously DeFi has been wiped out. So lending, lending, I don't know. People have short memories. Maybe lending will come back. Maybe people are that stupid. Um, uh, my friend, my other friend said, look, people won't even remember this in six months and they'll be they'll be lending on some new platform right away, getting 14 percent APY on some 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 Matic or something. And I think he's right. I think people don't they just forget and jump back in. But for me, DeFi has been permanently damaged. Current DeFi. So yeah, this is just the first generation of DeFi, but I'm yeah. afraid we are going to have to drop this up. So thank you very much for, for being here and see you next week. Bye bye.